good. Okay. So, so four years ago, on the last day, the first trip that we had over here, and uh, the leader of that village, we were heading out of the mountains that day and heading back home, and he asked us if we would go across the valley, a little detour, big detour in India, <laughs> but to this village, because he says they they never get any visitors. And God had been leading us the whole day before to even get us to the village of Porlu. And so we just knew God was in the plan of where we were going the entire time. And so we, we said, that's it. Karuti's mm -hmm. going to be it. And when we go across the valley. And so we came over here. It was my turn to share. And we shared right there on the, the platform. And there were tons of people here. But um, it was pretty chaotic. Apparently it was a market day of some kind. But... um. Still, I just knew the Holy Spirit and God was going to do all kinds of stuff that day. And at the end of the presentation, nobody wanted to accept Christ. Mm. Everybody, you know, they didn't want anything to do with it. Um, they liked the story, but they didn't want to um, accept. So it was, I couldn't figure out, it's like, Lord, what are you doing here? You know, it's like, I, I just knew he was going to have a great um, revival of that day. But... Um, Afterwards, I talked with the village leader, and he was holding his grandbaby. And the um, first question he asked me is, like, if this story is true that you told me, why hasn't anyone ever come here before to share this story? And that's a difficult thing to say. That's a difficult uh, question to answer why. Yeah. Yeah. But then he understood the story well enough to know that if no one was here to tell his ancestors, no one was here to tell his family that it died before them and they died not knowing this truth mm. not ever being warned of yeah. of hell and the consequences then um, he wanted to be with his family he said he was willing to go to hell to be with his family once again to be with his ancestors and um, I shared with him the story about the, the beggar and uh, the rich man um, that went to hell and was pleading you know please go and warn them not to come here you know yeah and um, he's, at the end, he said that he would consider what we had said and um, he would think about it and, and share with his village. And then the last thing I told him was, well, consider your granddaughter there. We yeah. want her to spend eternity. And uh, that's where we left it. And we um, hiked out of the mountains that day. But Karuti had always been on our hearts. And we felt that we had done everything God had sent us to do. And um, But... Through the years since then, we've heard stories of Karuti. We've heard of believers in Karuti. And um, we were, at one point, we were just over the mountains this direction mm -hmm. when we heard that there were many believers in Karuti and they were building a church here. And we almost came over that year, but it was like God was like, no, you're here to, to go to the lost people of the mountains. It's like those that I'm taking care of. But it, it made us feel great. And then it was like every village that no one received Christ, it was like, well, maybe it's another Karuti. You know, yeah. we always use that as an example. Then last year, even more miraculously, we, um, we were in a village far away from here. And there was a Pastor Joseph that lived there. And he was telling us where he pastors throughout the mountains. They, they usually have like five villages maybe that they'll go to a week. And one of those was a village called Karuti. And we're mm. like, that can't be the same Karuti. <clears throat> and um, after talking to him, it, it was yeah. the same Karuti. And um, it was amazing. He said, the, and then we asked him, well, what was, you know, what happened after we left? You know, how did so many people come to Christ? And he said, uh, a year after these men had come and shared the gospel with him, which was the year that, that we had gone, a year after we had been there, um, one of the children here got very, very sick and was dying. And um, they had prayed to all their gods here. They had had the witch doctors do all their medicine and, and stuff and sacrifices and nothing was working. The child was dying and dying. And then they remembered this God that we had come and shared with them about. And they knew there was a pastor down the mountain um, that, had, um, that was teaching about the same God. So they walked down the mountain and told this um, pastor I'm not sure if they brought the child down there or had him come up here, but they said, you pray over this child, and if that child is healed, then we'll follow your God. Mm -hmm. And miraculously, the next day, the child was healed and was healthy. Mm -hmm. 
And so many of them followed God at that day. And then over the over time, more and more in Karuti um, were coming, becoming believers. And then they eventually asked Pastor Joseph to come up to Karuti and they would build him a church here. And from what I understand, most of the village are believers now here in Karuti. Okay. And, um, it's just an absolute miracle. Yeah. Um, the <clears throat> one thing I asked uh, Pastor Joseph how he ended up way over here in the mountains. Yeah. And his testimony was that he was um, um, worked in charcoal. He would make charcoal and sell charcoal. And he said one day he asked God, he said, is this really what you want me to do? Is this what you want me to do with my life or is there something more? And um, that night he had a vision and a dream. And that vision was a, um, of a bamboo tunnel leading up to the mountains. And he asked his um, pastor, he said, um, what does this dream mean? And the pastor said, I believe this dream is, means that you're to go into the mountains and, and minister to the people there. So he stopped what he was doing, his job, and he started ministering anywhere he could go, everywhere he could go in the mountains. And one day he was walking along the railroad tracks, and he saw this vision. Mm. Of, the, of the bamboo. And I mm. knew exactly what he was talking about when we had come out of the mountains from mm. Karuti in 2011. <clears throat> We had come to that point at the railroad tracks, and uh, uh, Matt Ellis that was with us passed out at that moment, went down to his knees. At the time, I was thinking, well, <clears throat> he's just exhausted, tired from the hike. It was the end of the week. But that was holy ground. Yeah. And uh, I had a picture of that from 2011. So <clears throat> when I got home, the first thing I did was rummage through my pictures and find that. Yeah. And um, sure enough, there was this tunnel of bamboo that was this man's vision leading yeah. up to yeah. eventually Karuti. Yeah. Um, so. It all comes back around. It all comes back around. Yeah. So. And now for, we're going to go worship with him. And now we're going to go worship with him. <sighs> and um, so it's what just. an experience. It's just a blessing to me why God is leading us here when ordinarily we're searching for unreached people that have no opportunity to hear Christ but I just believe God just is showing off showing what he can do in our absence he's like man I got this taken care of you do what I called you to do you go and you just share the word I'll work it out from there mm. and this is just confirmation on that There's a moment. the word does not go in vain he takes care of it from there so. oh, God is good all the time all the time God is good So, um, what happened like uh, after this healing happened, you know, that boy's family and some other family came to know the Lord, like half of the village. But eventually, the whole village, right now, the whole village is in the Lord. Amdaro, yavaro, yavaro kora veerilo leh. Amdaro, devo lo kudse. Amdaro, kaya tika chapadu devo nama.